Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are performing a fundamental stock analysis of Cincinnati Financial Corporation, ticker symbol CINF. We're looking at Cincinnati Financial today because the business is a dividend king. Dividend kings are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payments for each of the past 50 years. There's a very select group of businesses that have been able to accomplish this. Being a dividend king puts Cincinnati Financial in the same group as other well-known businesses such as Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, and Johnson & Johnson. Cincinnati Financial is actually better than all of those businesses in the fact that it's consecutively increased their dividends for each of the past 62 years. They have one of the longest dividend track records of any member of the S&P 500. Right now, Cincinnati Financial is trading for $109.71 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is down about 8%. So even though this is down, this is better than what the S&P 500 has been doing over this period. Over five years, the business is compounding at a rate of 7.5%. Over 10 years, they're compounding at a rate of about 10%. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last nearly 18 years, Cincinnati Financial has compounded at a rate of about 5% annually. Keep in mind that this compounded annual return would not be including their dividend yield. So right now, Cincinnati Financial has a 2.5% dividend yield, and their average dividend yield over this period would be in addition to this compounded annual return. So over the past 10 years, they've averaged around a 2.8% dividend yield. If that were the same case for this nearly full two-decade period, then it looks like the business would be compounding at a rate of about 8% overall. Right now, Cincinnati Financial is down $30 from their 52-week high. They're up about $20 from their 52-week low. Right now, about 2.5% of their shares outstanding are sold short, and the business has just under a $17 billion market cap. So for more background about the company, Cincinnati Financial Corporation is a property and casualty insurance company that generates income through written premiums. A select group of independent agencies actively markets the company's business, home, and automotive insurances within their communities. These agents offer the company's personal lines as well as its standard market, excess, and surplus commercial line policies in many regions across the United States. Cincinnati Financial also offers leasing and financing services. The vast majority of the company's revenue is generated through commercial lines followed by personal lines. Cincinnati Financial Corporation was founded in 1950 and surprisingly is not headquartered in Cincinnati. Instead, the business is headquartered in Fairfield, Ohio. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Cincinnati Financial based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the typical business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Cincinnati Financial has earned pretty good returns returns on capitals in 2019, 2020, and 2021 as well. However, their returns on capital have been sporadic as showcased by some of these earlier years. And in fact, over their last 12 months, Cincinnati Financial has a negative return on capital. There are ups and downs in their insurance business. Over these last five fiscal years, when we average this out, Cincinnati Financial earns about a 13.5% return on capital. So while that is solidly above that of a typical business, that's coming in just below that 14% mark we're ideally looking for. And unfortunately, this is going to be an X to start things off here on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. Over this time frame, while it does look like they've had very strong growth in their revenues from fiscal 2017 to fiscal 2021, including their last 12 months worth of numbers, the business has grown their revenues by about 18%. So somewhat steady but modest growth for their revenues. Their net incomes, unfortunately, are down over this period. They were positive in all five of these years. However, over their last 12 months, they're negative. This is because their operating expenses have really risen over the past year. Their free cash flows are a bright spot for their business, though, because they've managed to have positive free cash flows in all five of these years and over their last 12 months as well. They nearly doubled this from fiscal 2017 to fiscal 2021, and they brought in more than $1 billion worth of free cash flow in all five of these years. That's great because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business, and ultimately a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to reinvest back in the business, make acquisitions, 
dividends, pay dividends, buy back shares, or pay down debt. It's great to see that they've had strong free cash flow growth and relatively predictable free cash flows as well. Again, though, because their earnings are down over this period, this is going to be another X on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Cincinnati Financial on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. Over this time frame, Cincinnati Financial has repurchased around 4% of their shares outstanding, which is likely a good thing for long-term shareholders in the business because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business repurchases their shares by decreasing the amount of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which ultimately increases the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. So just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. And that likely requires just a deeper look into the business to be able to understand that one way or the other. While it is good to see that they bought back some shares over this time frame, again, their net incomes are down over this period. Earnings are negative over their last 12 months, meaning that their earnings per share are going to be down over this period. So this is our third X in a row. And so far, we're not starting things off so great for Cincinnati Financial. We are 0 for 3 through our first three metrics. Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years in contrast to their earnings their free cash flows are up over this period and with their slight share buybacks their free cash flows per share have nearly doubled they've earned more than twelve dollars per share in free cash flows over their last 12 months which is up just a little bit from where they were in 2021, meaning that this is our first check of the day here, coming in a little bit late on metric number four, but so far through our first four metrics, we have one check and three X's. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt, so we don't wanna be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are gonna be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the last five years. So right now, Cincinnati Financial has negative net debt. They ended fiscal 2021 with negative $242 million worth of net debt. And right now they're sitting on about negative $200 million worth of net debt, which really means that the business has about $200 million. Coupling this with their pretty reliable and growing free cash flows over the past five years, this is likely a healthy position for their balance sheet. They produced more than $6.8 billion worth of free cash flow over this period, and they're sitting on $200 million worth of cash. So this is a big check here on metric number five, as it looks like the business is reasonably financed and they're very cash flow generative. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of the business. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a perspective of the economic reality of the business that's more similar to as if Cincinnati Financial were a private company. So right now, they have about a $16.5 billion total enterprise value, and we learned that over the last five years, Cincinnati Financial has earned $6.8 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, they're earning just under $1.4 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $1.4 billion of their average free cash flow by their $16.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about an 8.4% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So on an average basis of their historical free cash flows, this is a check here on metric number six, as this is coming in both above that 5% benchmark we're ideally looking for, and more than double that of the yield of the 10-year treasury. Also worth being aware of is that over their last 12 months, Cincinnati Financial has earned about $1.9 billion worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their nearly $1.9 billion of their cash flow by their $12.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about an 11.2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the company. That's even better than where they've been at historically. So even though this is a check here on metric number six, and this is looking positive on both an average and a current basis of their free cash flows, this doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go necessarily buy the business. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and this is not financial advice. Instead, this is a holistic and beginning look at Cincinnati Financial. And although these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. And we're not done quite yet. Then as a bonus here, we're taking a look at Cincinnati Financial's dividend profile. So again, Cincinnati Financial is a dividend king of 62 years, and right now they're paying out an above average 2.5% dividend yield. 
However, people make mistakes all the time by either blindly chasing dividends or blindly chasing dividend track records, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business and to determine whether or not that company's dividends are well supported by that business's cash flows. With no surprise, in all five of these years, Cincinnati Financial has increased their dividend payouts per share as they both increased their dividends and they bought back shares over this time frame. And in all five of these years, Cincinnati Financial has increased their cash flows per share, and they've maintained a seemingly very healthy dividend payout ratio, maintaining a wide berth between the cash flows that the business is bringing in and the dividends that they're paying out to shareholders. So their dividend profile, while it is a snapshot of the last five years' worth of performance, and it's not necessarily a guarantee for the future, does look like it's in very healthy shape for Cincinnati Financial. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Cincinnati Financial, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value of their business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over the last five years. Then we're using historical growth assumptions for the business based off how they've grown their free cash flows dating back all the way till 1990. So these are historical growth assumptions that you need to do your own homework on to determine whether or not these are going to be potentially accurate and applicable to give us a reasonable baseline projected estimate for Cincinnati Financial going out over the next 20 years. So using a growth stage over the next 10 years where we assume that Cincinnati Financial grows their average free cash flows at a rate of just under 6% annually, then using a terminal stage for the 10 years after that where this growth rate is cut by nearly half and they grow these free cash flows at a rate of just under 3% annually. If we were seeking a potential 10% rate of return from the business, then it looks like a fair value for Cincinnati Financial is right around $128 per share based off of today's valuations of the business. Using these same historical growth assumptions from today's valuations, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 12% rate of return from the business. Keep in mind that there are some caveats here. One, we would not be doubly counting their dividends, so these rates of return would be including their 2.5% dividend yield. Also, there are a number of reasons why this might not be potentially accurate going forward for the business. It's worth being mindful that this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professional. So in summary, Cincinnati Financial checks the box on three out of six of our metrics. After not starting off so hot, going 0 for 3 through our first three metrics, they really picked it up on the back end and finished strong. The company is earning average returns on capital that were just very slightly off from that 14% benchmark we're looking for, although they are negative over their last 12 months. While the company has grown their revenues and their free cash flows, their earnings have suffered as their operating expenses have increased. Then the business has bought back about 4% of their shares outstanding, so modest buybacks for Cincinnati Financial. Then after paying off all of their debt, the business is sitting on around $200 million worth of cash, which combined with the fact that they are very cash flow generative, producing more than $1 billion worth of free cash flow and growing these free cash flows in all five years, it looks like the business is in a healthy position financially. On a basis of both their current and average free cash flows relative to their enterprise value, it looks like the yield that that's giving us in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury is potentially attractive and is potentially offering us a risk premium. It does look like the business is possibly one that's interesting to learn more about and dig deeper into. Looking at their dividend profile, the company has grown their dividends in all five of these years in line with their status as a dividend king of the past 62 years. And they've had strong growing free cash flows over all five of these years as well, paying out a seemingly very healthy dividend payout ratio. Finally, performing a discounting cash flow analysis of Cincinnati Financial. If you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, then it looks like from today's valuations, if you were seeking a 10% rate of return going forward for the company, that a fair value for their business would be around $128 per share. Keep in mind that this would be including their dividend yield and that there are some reasons why this might not be potentially accurate for the company going forward. One is that nearly over the last two decades, this would be outpacing how the business has performed. And so it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Cincinnati Financial. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. 
Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of the business and you can truly understand the underlying essence of the company and understand what's important and what's not important for the business going forward. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Cincinnati Financial and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Cincinnati Financial Corporation, ticker symbol CINF. Again, we looked at the business today because they're a dividend king, paying out paying out consecutively increasing dividends for each of the past 62 years, and they have an above average dividend yield of 2.5%. So with that strong financial track record, it could be interesting to look at the business in potentially uncertain times. And with Warren Buffett recently making a major acquisition of Allegheny Insurance last year, there are potentially other mergers or acquisitions that could happen in the insurance industry. So if you learned something and or you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Cincinnati Financial with me and have a great day.